Diversity Book Review by Maggie Blackwood. The first book that I chose was Amazing Grace by Mary Hoffman. This age group, the age group of this book is pre-K through second grade. This story targets young children who love to use their imagination. Amazing Grace is a story that most children can relate to. Grace is a young African-American girl that lives with her mother and grandmother. She has a vibrant imagination. She loves to hear stories, read stories, and make stories up. She loves acting out stories that she's made up in her head. When she finds out that her school is putting on the play Peter Pan, she wants to be the lead. When the girl in her class tells her that she can't be Peter Pan because, she is, because Peter Pan was not black, it hurts her feelings. Her grandmother and mother remind her that she can be anything that she sets her mind to, no matter her gender or skin color. She practices hard for the tryouts for the lead, and her classmates chose her to be Peter Pan because she was the best. Grace learns to believe that when she believes in herself, she can do anything that she sets her mind to. An activity that one can do with their classroom would be a directed drawing of Grace, and then after the drawing that they could put a writing piece with it to write about what they have learned from Grace. The second book that I chose was Last Stop on Market Street by Matt de la Pena. The age group of this book is pre-K through first grade. The story starts off with an African-American bo young boy, CJ, and his grandmother leaving church and headed for the bus stop. On the way to the bus stop, CJ sees his friend in a car and he asks his grandmother why they can't have a car so they don't have to take the bus. His grandmother tells him that they don't need a car because that they would miss that all the friends that they encounter on the bus. As his friend drives off, he is jealous that his friends don't have to go to Market Street every week after church. His grandmother tells him that she's sad for them because they don't get to meet the sweet people that they get to meet each week. While on the bus, CJ sees people with phones and wishes that he had one too. A musician starts to play his guitar and CJ starts to feel the music and has a change of heart. When they get to their destination he's, and he sees the sweet people's faces, he is glad that they have come to, the, to serve at the soup kitchen. CJ learns that he is blessed with what he has been given in his life. He learns to be grateful for what he has and, not, and, and to look for the beauty in everything. An activity one could do with their classroom is to have a food drive. And once all the food was collected, they could take a field trip to a food bank and serve or deliver the items. That way, the students could learn firsthand just by giving a little bit of their time that just by giving a little bit of their time that they can make a world of difference in someone else's life. The third book that I chose was Leo the Late Bloomer by Robert Krauss. The age group of this book is pre-K through first grade. This story starts off with Leo the lion and his other animal friends reading, writing, eating, and speaking. Leo, Leo's friends are good at everything that they do, but Leo cannot do any of the things that they can correct the correct way. Leo's father is concerned about Leo, but his mother assures him that Leo is just a late bloomer and that he will do the things that his friends could do in his own time. Leo's father waits all year for him to bloom. Finally, one day, Leo started to read, write, eat without making a mess, draw, and speak clearly. At the end of the story, Leo his parents and his friends are proud of him and all the progress that he has made. Students can learn that not everyone learns at the same pace. They need to keep practicing and not give up because one day they will be able to do what others can do if they put their mind to it. One activity that a teacher can do with their class would be to create a flower and with each petal have the kid, the students write something that they can do. Students, uh, teachers could also put their um, 
picture of the child in the middle or they could draw it and the stem could be a, um, a sentence of something that they're working toward to do better. The teacher then could hang it up on the bulletin board to remind the students that everyone is different and it will also remind the students of what they are working toward.